I'd like to introduce Frank Carver from the University of Suffolk, educating future software developers about sustainability. So, Frank, over to you. Uh, thanks, Mike. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, right. So, um, I'm uh, uh, well. I've had about over 25 years in the software business, um, and I, during that time, I got kind of upset about certain aspects of the business. So, what I've done is I've taken some time out to do a PhD at the University of Suffolk. Um, now, I'm dealing with my broad area is um, sustain sustainability of software development. So, in order to introduce that, I'll, here's a bit of background. So, um, most people tend to think of, if they think of it at all, think of the cloud and the internet as being essentially free. Um, but that's not the case at all. Um, some recent estimates, 2019 estimates, reckon that the uh, the carbon output of the internet and data centers in particular is approximately equivalent to that of the entire airline industry. Now, that's a massive amount. Um, data centers in particular, they contribute or they use up about one to two percent of all the power generated uh, in our country. And um, an, an even bolder estimate has also come out recently saying that um, the Internet as a whole takes about 10 percent of the world's electricity. Now, this is a big figure, so it seems to me that there are some improvements that could be made, but it gets worse than this, because when you look at the electricity generating process, the, if you take the energy in the fuel that goes into power stations, then most of that, 80 percent or so, is lost before it even gets to the servers in the data centers. So it's lost in the generation process, it's lost in cabling, it's lost in lighting and cooling and backup power and all sorts of things in the process. So you've already lost about 80 percent of it. Um, and then when you actually look inside the servers, then you get to um, more losses. Essentially, servers have their own power supplies, which lose power. They have their own spinning fans and spinning disks. And at any given time, most of them are probably not doing as much as they ought to be. So as a rule of thumb, you're probably looking about 1% of the generated fuel, you know, the fuel fed into the generators is actually being used to power actual software that we actually want to use. Now, this is a big issue because there are about 100 million servers on the Internet at the minute and software efficiency therefore matters. So if we want to solve this problem, if we want to improve the sustainability and efficiency of systems, we need two things. And one of them is about uh, education. However, if you've been through any kind of computer science education, you'll, you'll probably come across some of these efficiency things, big O notation and comparing algorithms and all sorts of things. But there are problems with the way this is taught. So um, Apart from anything else, we tend to teach software development by saying, well, you'll start with a blank page and you'll be given a problem. And it's probably a fairly standard problem that there's textbooks about it. Um, but the, the biggest problem is that essentially, if it won't fit on a PowerPoint slide, then we don't include it in the lectures. And real world problems are a lot bigger than that. So in the real world, we don't start from a blank page. We don't start from an empty text editor. What we do is we look at a bigger problem that might there might already be a code base. But certainly when we're trying to make things work, we look for already existing components and libraries. So they come from any or all of these sort of places. And the great majority of components that we use in our modern software systems are free in the sense that they're free to buy. There's no monetary cost. However, we don't really know anything about them. So I took an example component thing um, and did some comparisons. So if you think a little bit about a typical web page, okay, so you go to a website, you fetch the web page and you get a bunch of text and it's probably customized with all sorts of different things. Now it's a long time since anybody sat down with an empty text editor and actually typed in a web page. These things are all generated using what's called templating where most of it exists and the gaps are filled in dynamically when you request the page. Now I compared sort of representative example of these libraries to do this and found there was over a thousand times difference in performance between the best and the worst. So to put that into context, if you're filling up your servers, um, then you might need a thousand times more servers to serve a particular application if you chose the worst one out of this collection than the best one. And so it's a thousand servers instead of just one server. And that makes a huge difference. So there's a big problem to be to be dealt with here because we can't work this out. There's no information. So if you compare software with the way the rest of the world works, well, we're deluged with information. If you buy a home appliance, it comes with an energy rating. If you buy an electronic component, it comes with a data sheet. If you buy a car, it comes with miles per gallon figures, and people argue about how accurate they are. In software, well, it kind of works. That'll do. Move on to the next project. Um, we don't really consider any of this stuff. Now, 
obviously there's an issue with the documentation here, but there's an also an issue with education. Um, young software developers, new software developers are not taught any of this stuff. Um, now, sustainability is beginning to become an issue. So all of these different accreditation bodies that I'm showing on here, um, they all have sustainability now in their right. pipeline. Frank, yeah. Frank, I'm gonna have to stop you there. That's five minutes, no. man. Man, <laughs> I can't, let me get to the last slide. Okay. If you're one of these people, please get in touch. <laughs> and my slide deck's available at the address given. <laughs> Apologies, that's a lot of information to cram in in five minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much.